Welcome to Week T Gaming. What's up, YouTube? Today's video is taken from our Torment Tides of Numenera live streams. If you're not familiar, Torment is an isometric RPG uh, that includes a lot of reading. So please sit back, enjoy story time, and give us a like or a comment on the video at the end. Where did he fall from? Hey, you know what that looks like? Oh, he smashed a talk. That, that looks like a resonance chamber. All I saw was the corona, not his origin point. But look, he's healing already. Spontaneous regeneration. Wait, one of them knows my face? Allergern. What was that? What did you do? What did you do, Calistige? 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 Okay, okay. His tone has become accusatory, suspicious. You open your eyes. First thing you notice is this man's kaleidoscope of tattoos writhing across his forearms. He wears a long, dark coat belted at the waist, supplies filling the pockets. His boots are worn and stained with years of travel. You blame me. He emitted an internal physiological reaction in response to the fall, probably related to that fantastic healing process. Obviously, Allegern. Her voice rolls and hisses, and you have to rub your eyes to be sure that you're not seeing double. Faint echoes of her actions trail from her, each nearly mimicking her, though some act and react to stimuli that you can't perceive. Her vivid hair and outrageous clothing remain constant through these shadows. Oh yes, it's obvious, Kalistig. His voice is grim and clipped. Then he sees you looking at him. You're no ordinary mortal. We know that much. Start talking. His face is hard and set. Scan thoughts. He's the changing god, Kalistig is deliberately blinding herself. But why? Who are you? Tides changed. Legacy has shifted. You don't remember who I am. You're more self-centered than I ever imagined. Silver Tide raised a tiny amount. What is Silver Tide? What are these things? What's happening? Kalistig. You know he's not the changing god, Allergern. Scan thoughts. Allergern's being more paranoid than usual. How long must I put up with him? Allegorn, it's his face. I've never seen any other people rebuild themselves like that. Only the changing god could have healed so quickly. He sighs and rubs his face, trying to regain his composure. Maybe you could help me for a change. You know what this means to me. You're familiar with the word changing, Allegorn. It implies inconstancy. Thus, the changing god may well have changed. Several versions of her shrug and she addresses you. You have to forgive him. He believes you're someone he once knew, even though it's painfully obvious to anyone that you are newly born. Prestige. Her most solid self curtsies while others bow or spin. I and my sisters am Kalistige. This is Allegern. We are explorers, knowledge seekers. That's how we came to be in this room. If I'm not mistaken, you are what we call a cast-off. The changing god created you, body and mind. Your sire used your body for a time then abandoned it for reasons of his own. When his mind departed for a new experience, you were born in his cast-off shell. Where are we? What is this place? Kalashtig, a sanctum of your sires. The common belief is he has several such places throughout the Ninth World, possibly other worlds as well. We were only just able to gain entry to this one because of your grand entrance. Who is the changing god? Ha! That's something coming from you. Allergan is very... Aggressive. Kalishji. She gives him a sidelong glance. The changing god is your sire. Dear. 
He discovered a path to immortality a long time ago, a means to transfer his self to a new body of his own creation. I don't think he knew, however, that when he abandoned one body, another mind was birthed to fill the void. Al says, oh, he knew all right. His eyes, he eyes you up coldly, up and down coldly. I'm at work, can't sit and watch. My advice, do all the things. Campaign isn't super long. So just make a choice, even if it feels like you can't get the right one. Also, all the companions are awesome, so just build a party that you enjoy. Fair enough, I appreciate that. You knew all right, as you have been down coldly. The only thing the changing god cares about is himself. He doesn't give a single thought for those he leaves behind. Scan thoughts. He sees us as experiments, not humans. Are there other castoffs? Dozens, Callie says. Hundreds. Who can say? Your sire has been doing this for several centuries. How dare you call me at this time? Al says, though if all of them were born the way you claim to have been, it's a wonder any of them survive. I haven't claimed anything, Al. Uh, say I was born when the change of God left. Why am I not dead? Al says, I used a cipher to slow your fall further, but the damage still would have killed an ordinary person. But think about it. If you're the kind of person who can make your body into anything you want, what do you do? If you constructed bodies for centuries, you want to make each one better than the last. You want to live forever. You're not going to let your life end by accident. No, you'll make strong bodies. Fast, powerful. Maybe throw in regeneration while you're at it. Callie says, The changing god has always been vain. He rarely stays long in a shell that doesn't suit his self-image. She looks you up and down, her smile suddenly unnerving. Perhaps the changing god fled because he didn't want to wear those scars of yours. Well, if he abandoned my body, where is he now? Al says, if. If he abandoned your body, then his consciousness fled to another. He eyes you keenly. Callie says, oh, do stop. The look she gives Allergen is uh, equally piercing, amplified by the withering glares of her sisters. If there's one thing we know about the changing god, dear, it's that he always has a contingency. This child was born here. The object of your obsession will have been reborn somewhere else. How can you be sure this body's a cast-off? Callie, you mean aside from your miraculous reformation? For one thing, there's your tattoo. All cast-offs have one. But its purpose is beyond me. And then, of course, there's your delicious naivete. Al, he could be faking it. You don't live hundreds of years without learning to lie convincingly. Kelly, oh, four. She sighs in exasperation, then says to you, what do you think? Are you a newborn child or are you a powerful immortal with whom death has robbed of his memories? Al, Al crosses his arms and growls. Fine, what do you think? This should be interesting. What if I am the changing god? So much I don't know or remember. I think I must be a cast off. You obviously knew the changing god, Al. What do you think? Am I him? Blue tide raised? What are the tides? What do they mean? I don't understand. Al. That is just the kind of question he would ask. He scrutinizes you in a way he hadn't before. You carry yourself with the same arrogance, that glint of knowing everything about our world and the worlds before it. Your personality, that's very much the same. Al says, if you're not him, you're his God's darn spitting image. He spits as if to emphasize the point. You have a lot to answer for from a lot of people. People like me, he thinks. Mm. Callie, and what are you basing that conclusion on, Al? Your feelings? Al says. He looks away, and his composure slips a little. God, you're so rancid sometimes, Callie. What was that blast of energy when I awoke? 
Do you know anything about the tides? You guys know anything about the tides? They're kind of moving around, I can feel. Callie, I've heard that term before, a subject your sire studied in great depth. I'm afraid it isn't my field of inquiry. Well, that's inconvenient of you to not know the answers I want. As I was telling my colleague, it was obviously a, phys a physiological reaction of some kind. I've never witnessed the birth of a cast-off, but yes, it could very well have been caused by your nascent consciousness. Don't worry, I don't believe it caused any real harm. Not to me, at least. Al? Really? You've been more abrasive than ever since we came in here. He shoots her a sidelong look. She just can't empathize with other people unless she's experimenting on them. You sure that surge didn't hurt you? If it did, it was damage in our minds. Though how you check if it carked her, I couldn't say. Tough to find normalcy there. Callie. At least we know it didn't hurt Al. That skull's as thick as organic stone. All right. Cool, 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 cool. What are the changing god's bodies like again? Powerful and beautiful, Callie says. Each one likely an improvement over the last. I'm curious what you're capable of, child. I suppose we'll find out. All right, well, let's talk about something else. Of course, child, you must be so disoriented. It was Changika? Nope. Can you tell me about the other cast of? Nope. Can I ask some more questions about this cast of body? Before I woke, here we go. Ow. With how hard you hit the ground, I'm surprised that's all you saw. All right, you guys, you're very useless. Why do you seem to hate the changing god so much? His face calm, but his voice bitter and tired. You should know, shouldn't you? You've ruined lives, committed crimes, and now it seems like you've forgotten the harms you've engineered. You've left a trail of the dead and dying behind you. Ooh, Al. Al is in a sad, sad, sad state. Callie. She and her echoes share an expression that is equal parts amused and appalled. He's not the changing god, Al. Uh, falling from the sky didn't kill me. Is there anything that can? Callie, an excellent question. Having seen your regenerative abilities in action, I su suspect they are primarily physical, a regrowth. If that's the case, you'd be unable to survive most varieties of psychic or molecular decomposition, disintegration, conflagration, and so forth. Degenerative diseases could pose a problem, and I know of several entities capable of psychic destruction. As she speaks, a vision flashes into your mind. It's not yours exactly. Somehow you know this is a memory of the changing gods. You are in a dark room, lit by a myriad of blinking lights and holograms from the many machines surrounding you. What about a body that can withstand the sorrow's attacks, says a voice. It seems to be coming from one of the machines. No, you reply. The thing has no respect for barriers of any kind. Physical, temporal, psychic. This is the only way. With a series of gestures, you bring up an image of crystalline pod. If the resonance chamber works, it will give us the power to stop the sorrow's hunt once and for all. We just need the right focal point. A catalyst. The memory fades. Callie is still talking. You realize that the device you saw in the memory is identical to the one behind you now. Looks just like the specter had described it. A transparent sarcophagus inside a crystalline dome. With mechanical arms arrayed around it on a metal ring. Unfortunately, the dome is shattered. The sarcophagus is cracked. And one of the arms is in pieces on the floor. Whatever its function, it clearly needs repair. Cali, or flesh-eating viruses. One presumes disfigurement by the iron wind would likewise be devastating enough to... I think he gets the point, Cali. Saw a vision of myself in another time and place just now. You didn't see it too, did you? Oh, I saw you stare into space while Cali graphically described all the ways you could die, but that's about it, he snorts. I only noticed because I did the same thing. Do either of you know about the sorrow? I've had my share of sorrows, but never THE sorrow. What's that? A disease? Callie, her mouth compresses in a tight line. I know nothing about it. Ooh, Callie knows something. 
Uh, do either of you know how to fix that crystal chamber there? Al chuckles, then firm and certain he says, not likely, though it might not be impossible. You need people with the appropriate knowledge. I'm sure the cult of the changing god will hold the answer. Callie. Her distaste is evident in the expressions of her echoes, although the face of the one in the lead remains carefully impassive. You turn to the insane help the insane to help a newborn? Where's your judgment, Al? I would take him to the Order of Truth. Hey, what's up, guys? Any sponsors for today? No. No sponsors. Have either of you played this game before? Allergan. The Order of Truth, are you mad? They would sooner take us apart. Would you like food? Are you gonna you just gonna teleport food to me? What's the order of truth? Callie, knowledge seekers, the learned who try to wrest secrets from the hearts of the prior worlds. They gather in the city to exchange their findings and help humanity build a brighter future. She smiles brightly. Our friend Al here was once one of them. There's no donate button. Look. Here's the thing. The goal here is to reach affiliate, and then we can start talking about whether or not it's worth people's money. All right? It's a, it's a stair-stepping problem, right? We're, we're working our way up. But I, I don't want people to just give me money because I exist. I want, I want there to be like a value exchange, you know? But I appreciate it. I do appreciate it. Al, frauds, quack slave salvers, quack salvers? What in the... You don't want to be an e-girl? Um, I don't think I have the body for an e-girl, honestly. Charlatans, they don't have all the answers, and I'd not trust them with the changing god's secrets. Callie, you're just angry that they couldn't help you with yours. Her echoes tinkle laughter. But I am being too cruel, dear Al. Let us take our new friend to the Order. What is the cult of the Changing God? Despite what she says, they're not insane. They're eccentrics. She laughs and he soldiers on. They're worshippers of, well, of you or your sire, the Changing God. They devote their lives to understanding your kind. Okay. Ooh, so I, there's a choice here. <laughs> Thank you, but I'll figure this out on my own. Hmm. Interesting. Callie, take me to the Order of Truth. Of course. Once I provide an introduction to the priest, we'll have your chamber fixed in no time. You'll end up with your clothes and broken in a ditch, without your clothes and broken in a ditch, while she laughs it off as a good experiment. Probably best I come with you as well. Oh, that's nice, Al. Callie, suspicious as always, Al. Child, the world is an exciting place, but it's full of dangers. Rest assured, one of us will get you safely to where you need to be. I'll be right behind you. A sunny smile crosses her face. I shudder to think what Al might do to the child. How do you want to go with me? What's in it for you? I won't deny that you are an exciting find, but it's not about that. I just want to see you safely out of the reef. Who knows what secrets this child could help me find? If I can help him live long enough. Interesting. Hey, Sam. I usually prefer coffee in the morning, but I guess I'll take a little tea. Sam, can I tell you a secret? And it's just between you and I. Nobody else gets to know. Um, not until like three days ago did I realize that the name of the channel could be a joke about testosterone levels. And I think that's hilarious. 
Also, good morning. I hope you and the baby and uh, mama are well. I, uh, I've appreciated all the photos. You uh, have a very adorable child. Do I have other questions? Uh, who did you say? Can I ask questions? No, I don't have any other questions. Let's go. You've gained your first companions. They will follow the last cast off and can be controlled during a crisis. You can speak to them about their past and take advantage of their unique abilities and skills. Companions have their own motivations and personalities. And depending on the choices you make, they may not follow you forever. You'll find more companions who can join you as you travel through the ninth world. Take this opportunity to explore your surroundings. You may find items, equipment, and more to assist you. When you are ready, you can leave the broken dome using the stairs to the northeast. Interact with the spark. A mechanical arm lies on the floor, presumably broken during your fall. Sparks pour from the arm's shattered housing, filling the air with a greasy stench. Lore machinery, quick fingers. Attempt to scavenge what you can from the arms housing. Let's examine the housing first. The sharply pointed apparatus that formerly topped the device appears burnt out and useless. The equipment in the base remains at least somewhat operational, as the constant stream of sizzling motes can attest. Attempt to scavenge what you can. Let's do that. If you select a companion's portrait in the effort window, they can assist the last cast off with some challenges. Your companion's stat pools are used instead of your own. They may have different skills, abilities, and statistics that make the challenge easier. Companions cannot assist in a crisis, can only use their stats during their turn. Is anybody? Ooh. Al's better. Like a, like a solid 80% chance. Success. Taking care to avoid the sparks, you extract several handfuls of shiny trinkets and coin-like objects. You recognize their value at once. Such objects would be accepted as shins, the informal currency in most regions of the world. So you gather them up and take them with you. Gained item. Spray flesh. Gained to 19 shins. Spray flesh heals eight points of health. Consumes movement. Sparks angrily leap to and fro amidst severed cables and other broken components. All right. What else? Sunlight falls through the ragged hole in the roof onto the shattered resonance chamber. It's hard to believe that you did this, that you plummeted through the curve of the pale blue sky, crashed through the dome, and broke this delicate machine with your body. It's hard to believe that you are still alive. Four mechanical arms hang over the center of the device, above the cracked, semi-transparent crystals of the sarcophagus. The fifth arm lies broken on the floor, among the scattered synth and crystal shards, and a metal ring surrounds the array, dented and broken, by your impact crater. Take a look at the sarcophagus. The padded interior beneath the coffin's cracked lid looks like it was made for a human body. Despite the damage, you don't see any way to open it and get inside. You glance between the sarcophagus and the needle-like protrusions at the ends of the arms above. It seems likely that using this chamber would not be a pleasant experience. Examine the suspended arms. Cables run from machines along the dome's walls to the base of the suspended arms, each of which is capped with long needles aimed at the cracked coffin, like chamber at the center of the platform. Gym-like lights flicker dimly at the bases of the arms. Anamnamnesis! A memory steals over you and it isn't yours. Sunlight falls through the unbroken dome, casting short, angular shadows behind the servitors, laboring to construct the device you and your assistant have designed. Their efficiency is perfect. After all, you designed them as well. The components are nearly in place. A ring for bounding, a platform for focusing, and five injectors, one for each tide. There's a moment before you realize the memory has faded and you've spoken aloud.
Let's take another look at the sarcophagus. It may be your imagination, but some of the cracks of the crystal seem shallower than they were before. Ooh. Examine the suspended arms again. They look like extension that the ends of the arm glitter in the dome's faint light. A number of lights at the bases of the arms have gone out. Inspect the metal ring. You feel the slightest hint of resistance every time you cross the ring, and now that you're paying attention, you note that your breath is echoing in your ears, as though you were inside a glass dome. When you step outside the ring, the feeling passes. Examine the shards on the ground. Jagged fragments of crystal are intermingled with synth from the shattered dome above. The crystal shards glitter in the light like captive suns. Uh, pick up one of the crystal shards. Item gained, crystalline shard. At the rim of the crater, you find a silver sliver of crystal, sharp as a dagger on one end and smooth on the other. Might make a usable, if somewhat crude, weapon. Look for other useful shards. You sort through the remaining pieces of crystal, but they are too small or too unwieldy to be of any use. Ring seems to project some kind of field, like a protective dome around the sarcophagus. Well, it didn't protect it very much, did it? Step away from the device. Doing it now. What else we got? Ooh, loot. Yes. Give me the loot. What have we got here? Shin. Encephalic rush? Encephalic rush, yeah. That does contain the word phallic. Nice. Um, heals three points of intellect. Interesting. Fleet foot moss. Heals some speed. I will take all of that. Yes, please. This looks like a computer. A slate black, unimpressive device hunkers before you. As you reach out to touch it, the triangle of lights on it its casing blazes into life, and an image unfolds in your mind. A towering crystal arch rises over a jagged gray landscape. The air is dead and stifling, and there, at its emerald peak, the image collapses, leaving you staring into the device's triangular array of lights. Command me, the device or the intelligence within it says, each word carefully etched with distaste. Who are you? Your command was not understood. The intelligence says with clear satisfaction, sounding for all the world like it understood the question, but is choosing not to answer. Command me. Uh, what commands do you recognize? The three lights throb irritably. Heated air sighs from the device's vents, and then a towering list of commands races through your mind, far too fast to read. You rub your eyes, groaning, and the intelligence chortles. Command me, it says smugly. Uh, show me that arch again. The device's triangle of lights throb in time with the growl of the engines within its casing, and the mental image unfolds once more. You see a huge crystalline arch on a jagged field. The arch is divided into rectangular cells, all of which are numbered, and they all appear to be transparent and empty except at the arch's pinnacle, one cell is lit in a brilliant pulsating emerald. The number zero is printed on its side. Try to remember more details. The memory blossoms. You stand before this arch, eyeing the last two active cells, and once impenetrable Lugum Vo. Unleash cell 29, you say, and a twisted artifact appears before you. You claim it with a faint smile, watching the light fade from the cell far above. You flinch from the memory, and it falls apart as you raise your eyes to the arch as it is now. Cell 29 is dark now. Only cell 0 remains. Dry grit whirls across the empty plain. Many kilometers beyond the arch is the faint outline of what seems to be a broken tower, except that it is slowly stretching into the gray air. Far beyond the arch, the broken tower reaches for pale, red-threaded clouds. 
Nope, that's it. Okay, close the image. You release your mental hold on the image of the arch and it collapses, returning you to reality. Command me, the intelligence says sulkily. Uh, examine the outside. An indignant hum rises from the intelligence's engines as you examine its ancient casing. Nothing looks out of the ordinary. You step back and the hum fades away. Unleash the contents of cell zero. You found a cipher. Ciphers are Numenera objects that can and trigger a powerful effect and only be used once. Ciphers and your cipher limit score are displayed in a special section of the inventory screen. Take care not to accumulate more ciphers than your cipher limit or you will experience unpleasant side effects. Device's lights flutter with incandescent shock, then focuses on you, flickering. Cell zero will now be unleashed, the intelligence spits. Please be advised that the object you are about to receive is completely safe. Use no caution whatsoever. The strange contents of cell zero materialize before you. Warning, all cells are now vacant, shuddering Lugumvo. The intelligence lights wink out one by one. Gained three XP, gained unstable detonation. I'm sorry, what? Deals 6 energy damage, 4 physical damage to all characters in range. Ah, so it's a grenade. Sounds fun. Now, oh, interesting that a cast-off can command the changing god's machines. He crosses his arms across his chest. How would you do that? Kalishti rolls her eyes at Al. Then she looks to you. He'll never stop gnawing on this bone, you know. The truth is wasted on him. She gets a glint in her eye. Though, I admit curiosity. How did you do that? You prefer the agony of being tired all day to... What? Maybe right. Maybe I am the change of God. I remembered something. I remembered something. I don't think it was my memory, though. Just lucky. I remembered something. I knew it, Al says, bearing a savagely triumphant grin at Callie. Meaningless, Sal. He clearly has basic skills and knowledge from the change of God having been in his body. Who's to say there aren't even more specific memories locked away in there? How many memories might this child have access to? I must know. Wow, she's going to rip me apart. Crackle. Examine. Tiny glowing moats float through the interior of this tower. Each one is surrounded by much smaller moats, like thousands of worlds circling their suns. That's the same thing? Okay. Naturally. What else? Flexible tubes that are attached to this machine appear to be later additions. Someone cobbled the device together, but its function is unclear. Yes. Oh, wait. Uh, broken fragments of the dome ceiling are scattered on the floor. They appear to be made of transparent synth. All right. Okay. All right. Interesting. I guess we leave. I need to talk to you. Ooh, alley boys wanting to talk, huh? Let's talk. This is the reef of fallen worlds, kid. Okay. It's a dangerous place at the best of times. Sure. And with you lighting up the sky as you fell. But we should get out of here as soon as possible. Interesting point. Why were you looking at me when you said that? Callie says. Al, I wasn't, he growls. Don't be so paranoid. But when she isn't looking, he raises his eyebrows at you knowingly. What makes the reef so dangerous? <laughs> the Numenera of the past are always dangerous. But there are other dangers too. Some closer than others. His thoughts are, I hate to think what Callie might do to him if I weren't here. What are the Numenera? You want me to tell you? He laughs without mirth. The Numenera are all around you. Everything left over from the prior worlds. 
Segus Cliffs thrives by trading artifacts from ancient civilization. Hells. Can't scoop a handful of earth without finding dirt from prior worlds mixed with it. Interesting. Numenera is anything from the prior worlds, but mostly we mean the stuff of value to us. A lot of the Numenera are just oddities, fancy trinkets with little real use. Sometimes you get a cipher that lets you do something incredible. Artifacts are worth even more. A cipher will only do something once, but artifacts last a lot longer. Though they can burn out at the most inconvenient times. He frowns. Not that it's ever happened to me. Of course, we've got no idea what most of this junk was originally intended for. In most cases, it doesn't really matter. Like, you might find what used to be a propulsion unit for a star chariot, but who knows enough to build you the rest of it? Better to use it as a weapon or a power source. He scowls, frustrated about something. I bet we could remake the world if we knew a tenth of the secrets of the ancient, but most days it's a challenge just to survive. Well, what's your story, alley boy? Ask me again when we get out of here. I don't trust this damned reef any more than the company we keep. What do you think of Callie as she stands here next to us? A parasite disguised as a skull arc. Don't be surprised if she betrays you before the day is done. Actually, that would be slow for her. Why are you traveling with her? He clenches his mouth shut and you can see his jaw muscles working. She said she could help me with a problem I had. We never seemed to get anywhere with my business, but found plenty of time for hers. He looks you square in the eye. It wasn't something I'd care to do again. Keep that in mind when you talk to her. Tell me about your tattoos. These? They're nothing. Call them a consolation if you must. He smiles grimly. Some call them by worse names. That's because they've had occasion to run afoul of these little snakes. He looks away. This line of questioning is clearly at an end. A gift and curse. They remind me of it every day. What do you think we should do next? <laughs> you want to fix that crystal chamber back there, yeah? First step is getting out of this reef. I don't want your help no more. All right, let's keep going. But should we talk to Callie? Hey, this Callie. Is this is not a place to walk lightly. There are dangers in the reef, both old and new. Okay, what dangers are in the reef? Myriad, we walk among the Numenera, detritus of fallen worlds and antediluvian wars. Not everything in the reef knows that its wars ended long ago. Yet the true dangers are contemporary. The reef holds the promise of treasure for the determined, but not always for the scrupulous. What kind of dangers are in the reef? What is the resonance chamber here in the reef? Why, why, why? An astute question, my dear. The most likely answer is that your sire discovered something he could repurpose for his own designs. If you can seal a dome as well as he did, the reef is as good a place as any for experimentation. What's your story? She laughs. Now is not the time, dear, nor is the reef a safe place for lengthy disquisition. Disquisition, nice. Rest assured, when we reach the cliffs, there will be plenty of time to swap tails. What do you think of Al? Her lips pucker, like she's tasting something foul. He's useful, she finally says. At least he was once. If that pompous lack, lack nibber, nice. Forgive my language, dear. Finds one more fault with me. I expect my sisters will murder him several realities. She cocks her head to the side. Hmm. There goes one now. Why were you traveling with him in the first place? Let's, we're just going to ask all the same questions. She sighs, the sound echoing like the hissing of a balloon. He was not always so sour. He was a man of science, an Aeon priest who reveal, reveled in knowledge. But his pain has infected him, and he sees the world through that cast. It would be tragic, but her echoes all seem as exasperated as she, as she continues. But he is the same in every existence in which I know him. It has become incredibly tiresome. He also said he could help me with my problem. He is a poor liar and I a fool. Yeah, pro tip. I'm really, I, the writing is fantastic and I'm, I'm just enjoying the narrative. I, you know, I, 
It might seem like I'm reading a book to chat, but I'm just, I'm in it. Uh, who are all these echoes of you? They are me. We are a part of each other, sisters across infinite realities. We share our experiences and power. It's that old saying that experiences bring wisdom. I must be the wisest person in Sega's cliffs. The wisest across countless worlds. Her laughter peals out. All right, well, let's just keep going then. Uh, now that you said the weirdest thing possible, let's uh, let's roll on. What is this thing? That's how PC gaming was when I first started. Pretty scenes and reading. <clears throat> yeah. It's making me want to replay, like, uh, Knights of the Old Republic, to some extent. <clears throat> Just for, like, the... All the dialogue trees and the... Running around. Two floating cones whirl and spin deliriously around each other, giggling like children being tickled. The air around them smells of sweet, burning leaves. What are you? Touch a cone as it passes? You know what? Risk much. Yeah, I mean, that's... <clears throat> Success! You managed to graze one of them with the tips of your finger. Rorn, a voice says, and your vision is stolen from you. A moon hangs over you, but it is not the one you recognize. It's black, and in a pearl-white sky, thick, flat asteroids orbit it like petals in the wind. You feel questing tendrils at your ankle, and the hot wind on your face smells of scorched hair and grief. <clears throat> well, that's frightening. Your vision returns. The cones hang motionless for only a second before resuming their giggling dance. Watch them for patterns. The longer you stare at these artifacts, the more you're convinced that they turn faster when their spiraling paths cross each other. Their edges seem to trace faint glowing lines that twine around each other, resembling a rope fastened to some invisible point beyond this time and place. <clears throat> yeah, D&D with a good dungeon master. Absolutely. <clears throat> Let's talk to the cones. What are you? The cones continue whirling and giggling like enraptured dancers, giving no sign that they've heard you. What are you for? <laughs> the cones greet your question with a split second of hushed silence, following by delighted peals of helpless giggling. They aren't for anything. They're from one of the worlds before this one. Al rubs a hand along his stubble jaw. Sometimes the Numenero will do something useful. Sometimes they'll turn you inside out. And sometimes they don't do a thing that makes sense. Callie, I've often said the same thing about you, darling. One more time. <clears throat> Childlike laughter is their only response. All right. In an instant. Can we go go up here? Fine. Although this cube hovers in the air, you can feel the ground shudder with its vibrations. A long cable extends from this spout, but at the point where it clips below the water, it's been snapped in half. Interesting. All right. Oh, this is the out. There's stuff over to the right. I, I didn't realize. <clears throat> Hello, friends. I'm sure you're all very nice. Quoro. As you step onto what looks like the back of the enormous construct, four strangers approach you. In the lead is a wiry man with parallel scars running from cheek to collarbone on the left side of his face. He gives you a welcoming smile, pulling on gray gloves embedded with pulsing lights. I bet those hurt. He's about to say something to you when he notices Callie. He's the star, or he came out of it. But what does Cal have to do with this, are his thoughts. Cal, I thought you'd sworn off trawling the reef. Found anything tasty? His eyes travel up and down, both you and Al. 
Odds and ends, Quoro. Nothing that would interest you, I'm sure. Her words are calm, but she has gone quite still. Is the thing shooting stuff? Her thoughts. What is he doing here? He has something up his sleeve. I know it. Hey, Callie, is something wrong here? Nothing's wrong, dear. I accompanied Quoro on an expedition once, long ago. His methods were too crass for my taste. Though in his defense, he never tried to kill me when my back was turned. She beams at Quoro. Or if he did, he failed, and I didn't notice. Al, I don't like this. Allergen hisses in your ear. But loud enough that Callie can hear, too. If, if she's cagey about him, it can only mean trouble. Callie, you should hear what I tell people about you, dear. She gives Al a venomous smile. Killer or not, she whispers, Quoro is not a man who can be trusted with unvarnished truth. Tread lightly. Turn to Quoro. What do you want? <laughs> right to the point, this one, isn't he? I know most of the draft that scavenges the reef these days, but it's a rare pleasure to see a new face. His smile is disarming. All I want is information. A falling star landed near here not long ago. I don't suppose you are around to see it. It wasn't a star. Truth. I fell from the sky. There was no star. Deception. To be honest with you, I saw the star but don't know where it landed. Hmm. Where did the star land? <laughs> well, if I knew that, I wouldn't be reduced to harassing noble travelers. I never saw it. You see, my employer did and thought, who is the most trustworthy team I can send at a moment's notice? He winks. Luckily, luckily they were on another assignment. We were interested and weren't too drunk yet. So here we are. <clears throat> what interests you about this star? How kind of you to ask, Quirrell says, clapping his gloved hands together. So few people are interested in the tangled motivation of paid explorers. He spreads his arms as if holding the sky and continues. The world is littered with ruins and fascinating secrets. Trouble is, anyone can claim them. But when something falls from the sky, ah, that's rarer. And a man can make his name off such a find. He pauses, then adds. We're also being paid quite handsomely. That helps. Enough chat, I think, he says, and there is no humor in his smile now. Where's the falling star? I'm also here for the star. Unlike you, I want it and all its secrets for myself. Hmm. Hmm. Hey, what are those gloves for? <laughs> Unwelcome but anticipated complications. He does not elaborate. He does so love his ambushes, Callie whispers in your ear again, even though her mouth is closed and she isn't looking at you. He didn't have the gloves when I knew him last, but I'd wager they're connected to devices in the area. So, Quarrel says, apparently unaware of Kelly's interruption. The star, have you seen it? Nice scars. How did you get them? <laughs> Just keep him talking, right? That's a... Two things are more dangerous than death in this world, he says, his smile widening. Asking impolite questions of strangers and playing with Numenera you don't fully understand. My error was in the latter category, and I've grown more careful since. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I'll be honest with you. I saw the star. I don't know where it landed. Is anybody good at lying here? We'll use up Callie's energy, I guess. Quarrel studies you for a long moment before sighing. All right, he says. Well, do let us know if you spot anything of interest. I'd like to say we'd pay for the privilege, but if we were rich, we wouldn't be down here, would we? If he's not telling the truth, then he's a fantastic liar. Guess I was wrong. All right, see you guys later. Al, nice thinking, kid. That would have been a fiasco. You figured out why they were here, right? I knew I couldn't trust Callie. This is the last time I make that mistake. They saw me fall from the sky and came to investigate. Oh, sure. 
And they just had that ambush ready to go at the same time as we're leaving? No, kid. Callie sold us out. Excuse me? Are you suggesting I had something to do with Quarrel's plans? Oh, I cannot abide his rabid paranoia a moment longer. Are you suggesting you didn't? An old friend of yours just happens to be waiting for us, armed and outnumbering us as we return from the greatest find the Reef has seen in years? It's too convenient for me. Too convenient by far. Oh, of all the idiotic, paranoid delusions, you really believe this, don't you? You really believe I'd use a half-wit like Quoro to stab you in the back rather than do it myself? You see, kid? She'll stab you in the back. First chance she gets. Most likely in your sleep. He throws up a hand, forestalling Callie's retort. Look, I don't care. Fact is, I can't trust you anymore, and I wonder why I ever did. This is the last we travel together. I've got enough to worry about without having to watch my back 28 hours a day. He turns to you. You coming, kid, or what? You guys are gonna walk away from each other over this? Oh, this is just the last needle that crushed the anine. You haven't seen one tenth of her depths, not one twentieth. She's a back stabbing hoe, and this mess here only proves it. Always a paragon of class, Al. If I did have any interest in betraying you, do you really think I would need Quoro's help? Yet this is the thanks I get for coddling your pain rattled judgmental weakness for so long. I've had enough. She turns to you, child, I am happy to guide you, but I will not walk another step with this paranoid buffoon. Finally, something we agree on, he growls. Kid, she'll chop off your head and spit down your throat. I'll get you where you need to go and let you sleep at night to boot. It's up to you. But, but, but why can't we all travel together? We, we could be one happy family. She bursts out laughing. My dear boy, we have been working it out. Al's petulance, his obstinacy in the face of fact, drive me away every day. He might be strong, but he's also thick. I dare you to try traveling with him and see how long you endure. Not as long as I have, I'll wager. His face darkens under her accusations, but he manages a pained smile. As if you're doing me a favor by staying with me. Do you think I don't see your true self and all of those echoes around you? That's you, Callie. Every facet of it. Your vivisectionist heart hasn't changed. Just the way you present it. I thought I could help you, but... Well... Hmm. <sighs> I think we're going with Callie today, boys. Right. Well, if you want me and she doesn't sell you for parts, you can find me in the underbelly. But not with her, mind you. She'll sell you for parts first chance she... Forget it. It's his choice, not my problem. Sorry to disappoint you, Al. I'll let you know what you've missed, Al. I'm sure you won't be missed, that is. She links her arm possessively into yours. Let's go, child. Now that you've dealt with Quarrel and his goons, you can continue on to the city of Sega's Cliffs. To reach the city, cross the bridge at the north end of the platform. Allow me. Yes. A matte black obelisk floats in midair above the water. It has sharp curved sides that converge to a glowing tip. Brightens or dims with the passing of the bay's faint breezes. Yeah, let's touch the obelisk. That sounds fun. You raise your hand toward the obelisk. Dull green light wells from within the black stone, fixed on you like a furious eye. Be careful around that device, dear. It does tend to spit beams of light at people who get too close. Her eyes gleam with warm recollection. A handsome young Aeon priest I knew managed to capture one in a crystal necklace. He looked so pleased with himself, but only in the one reality and the others the beam had torn straight through his eye. He wasn't quite as handsome or alive after that. 
stretch the crystal shard toward the obelisk. Carefully, you level the shard at the obelisk, and a superheated beam lances from the tip of the structure into the crystal, sending vibrations up your arm and suffusing the shard with a warm green glow. You picked up some items and equipment. To make full use of them, you will need to view them, equip them, or share them between your party members. View your inventory, click the inventory button on the bottom right of the hut. Inventory. Your inventory lets you view, equip, and manage items and equipment. You find uh, it has a number of sections. First is equipment, which contains any items equipped to the current character. Equipment includes melee and ranged weapon shields, armor, ornaments such as rings, amulets, and bottom uh, uh. The backpack contains the items being carried by the current character. You can equip, inspect, or transfer items from it. Quest items contain special items required for quests. That makes sense. Uh, okay, cool, cool. Final section shows the ciphers you are carrying and your cipher limit. Ciphers shown in the inner rings are highlighted in blue and are safe to carry. Those are on the outer ring, highlighted in orange, are over your cipher limit and inflict negative effects as long as you are carrying them. You can use, sell, discard, or transfer them to another party member to get back under your cipher limit. Cipher limits seem important. <clears throat> okay. Infused crystalline shard. Wow. Okay. Got some cool ciphers. So I can carry five before I get into trouble. She has a buzzer. A buzzer. Is it like a pistol of some sort? That's cool. Interesting. We shall see. What's this thing? Cobalt petals fold over a short metal stem. Calcified minerals hold the ancient weapon closed. What's this thing? Cable connects the spout to the collection device. The nozzle looks like it may have been attached to another machine at one time. This device is collecting black goop from somewhere underwater and pumping it to the nearby spout. A bubbling mass of sludge floats on the surface of the water. Every once in a while, an oily nodule separates from it, hurtles into the sky. Catch momentary glimpses of a muck-coated object in the putrid mass. Attempt to achieve the object trapped in the sludge. The next time sunlight strikes the object's streak surface, you're ready. You snatch it from the oily mass, clean it as best you can. Fresh vapors. Heals 10 points of intellect and confers fresh vapors plus one intellect edge. Cool. I'm not sure whether that awful muck is harmless or you are immensely lucky. Either way, do go on poking things, dear. It's quite entertaining. Carefully, you lean closer to the heaving mass. After a moment's study, you notice that the globules rising into the skies always contain something. Be it a shiny core of untainted seawater or a tiny fish. Spot no other mysterious objects in the bowling mass.
This looks like a door. This metal door is thick, heavy, and unmarked by time. Double rows of cir circular bumps run horizontally and vertically across its surface. It is firmly sealed. Examine the door more carefully. Metal surface is infused with minuscule threads that are barely visible to the human eye. They only run in straight lines and right angles, and they seem to converge at the circular bumps. Upon closer inspection, you notice that each of the bumps is unique. Some have flat faces, others are actually many-sided polygons, and a few are marked by tiny apertures. Unfortunately, you don't see anything that resembles a knob, keyhole, or access device. Try touching both the flat planes of the door and the small bumps, but nothing happens. Knock on the door. You knock lightly at first, then harder. The door makes no sound at all, nor does it shudder or yield. There's no one home, dear. It hasn't been for thousands of years. She appears at the door. One of my colleagues at the order claimed that she got inside, but I don't believe her. Let's let's give it one more one more time here, yeah? Metal is infused with minuscule threads. They seem to converge in circular bumps. All of which are subtly different from the others. You don't find anything that seems to be an access device, and touching the door has no effect. This is done. Loot! Got some encephalic rush. Lutridated force. Some shins. With alacrity. Without doubt. Loot. Lutridated fours, fleet foot moss, shins. What is this thing? A tangle cluster of metallic tendrils grows from the depths of the nearby water. Strangely, they resemble clawed alien hands, most of which have seven or eight fingers. The hands sway softly, but their movements are difficult to follow. Watching them for too long makes you feel nauseous. Apart from the hands themselves, you don't notice anything of interest in the cluster. Break off one of the hands, because why not? You grip the hand nearest to you and snap it from its roots. Stepping back, you give it a couple experimental swings. Good balance, might make a decent weapon. The eight-fingered mace. Examine the cluster again. Hands sway softly, but the movements are difficult to follow. Watching them for too long makes you nauseous. You wrap your hands around one of the wrists and pull with all your strength. Eventually gasping, you give up. Tendrils seem thicker and stronger now, as if they fortified themselves against you. Fair enough. Naturally. Massive construct was trying to climb across the top of the reef when it died, and its surface is pocked with tiny scars and scorch marks. Yes. A spherical head hangs loosely from this stanchion. A single metal fiber holds it in place. A sickly green crust scabs over the numerous cracks and divots in this turret. This turret's alive. A lambent green fluid drips from the end of the device's nozzle and hisses angrily on the metal surface beneath. Without any antagonist to aim it toward, the device doesn't serve any obvious purpose. Fair enough. Thank you for stopping by Wheat Tea Gaming. Make sure you leave a comment, 
Give us a little like or a dislike, whatever you feel like. Uh, maybe subscribe to the channel and uh, hopefully see you at the stream sometime. Twitch.tv slash Gaming.